Okay. We are, after some technical difficulties, good to go. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for your patience with me. Oh my, I have so much patience for you. It's unbelievable. I was actually, I was really excited about this. I know that it really, it's, it's like a very backdoor way. I feel like for me with my massage career, Mm -hmm. And look, I even got a little room ready for story time. Not my usual spot. I thought this was a little cozier. You know, you, I'm very excited oh for some story time. You. Next time I will do it. You know, it's a great idea. A little cozier. This is I awesome. almost wore like a um, Mr. Rogers vest. You know, and has yeah. like a little pipe. <laughs> so, but I do, I think that one of the things for me that I've, I really believe I don't know how, how you feel. Oh, by the way, Massage Mentor. Hi, Yay. Massage Yay. Mentor and Nelly. Hey. Out here. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the ways that I think that I learn best is dealing with people who have done things before me and then share their experience. Mm -hmm. And then another way that I feel like I really, really learn is uh, through stories. Yes. Because the story especially if it's a true story, it really happened. And there's, I just feel like the, the world is constantly giving us the answers and things are available to us every day. It's just a matter of whether we take the time to see them. And I know for me, and it sounds like for you, like I am eager to see the story. Absolutely. Like I'm always like, tell of stories. Me yes. the story. And when it's I say like the universe, like everything, like mm -hmm. let me see what's happening here. So let me have this experience. So we decided last time we talked that we would each, because we love telling stories, share a story. Mm -hmm. And my book is, like I said, this is not a massage related thing. Although I feel like every story, you can get something from it and relate it to your business. So we're going to do a couple stories today. Did you want to mm -hmm. start? Sure, absolutely. Why don't, you, why don't you give yourself your own? lovely introduction again i love okay. your shirt by the way oh did you see thank you yeah. so much well, actually um as you can see my shirt i have the tour eiffel from paris so i'm from france but i don't i'm not from paris i'm from south of france in provence and i uh, came in the u.s about 16 years ago now and i became a massage therapist and i developed a technique that involved bamboo stick to save your hands as a therapist to be able to give deep work and so my work today is working with the bamboo in the office and helping my clients with pain and relaxation. And I also teach this technique uh, across the country and outside of the country, especially before COVID when we could travel. Passion, I was actually just in Tennessee last weekend teaching a class, it was, it was awesome. We had a great time. And so that's what I do, you know, I, uh, I just help people and um, I'm happy to have uh, the bamboo to be able to help therapists and clients. So I feel very blessed in my life. Opportunity. So are you ready for your first, do you want to tell the first story? Yes, I want to tell the first story. So, you know, why I picked this story is because, um, remember you mentioned something last time you said, yeah, it can be just about giving a cup of coffee, coffee to someone. And then I, I, after that, I was like, actually, I have a good story about a cup of coffee. So I'm going to tell the story. So because I was traveling, uh, you know, to teach a bamboo fusion, I, I, I do a lot of travel and I'm always in the airport. And I was actually on my way to Philadelphia to my friend Angela and Jim to teach at the beautiful, you know, Academy of Massage and Bodywork uh, in Potsdam. And I was doing the line to get a cup of coffee and it was a long line. And I was still checking for my flight to make sure I'm not going to miss my flight. And behind me, he was this couple and you can definitely see that they were flight attendants. So um, I look at them, you know, and, and they, were, they were talking and no, wondering if they're gonna make it, but they really want a cup of coffee. So when it was my time, I actually tell them, please, go ahead, take my spot. I you know I have a time. And I said, anyway, we cannot go anywhere without you. I didn't even know if they were, you know, in my plane or anything. So they laughed. And uh, the lady was like, oh, it's so 
so nice of you. And where are you from? Because of course, as soon you know, I start to say the first word. Everybody asked me where I'm from, you know. So I told her, and she ordered a coffee with the with his friend coworker, and and then I said, you know what, guys, let me please buy the cup of coffee for me. It's it's really I want to do that. It's it's my pleasure. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's your. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, please, please, let me do that. So um, I paid a cup of coffee. I got mine, and then I go to take my catch my plane. So. I go on a plane and it was from Southwest. So, you know, you sit anywhere you want. So I kind of sat like a little in the front this time. And then I just wait, you know, and, and this beautiful couple by my side and we talk about all the kind of things, you know. And then the, the, we hear the captain uh, going out. We sit, I see the captain going out from the cockpit, right? And you know, it's, it's happened sometimes when the captain go out and take the microphone and talk to everybody and say, thank you for coming, you know? So the captain did that. And when I look at the captain, I could not believe it. So I have a picture to show you the captain. <laughs> the captain, it's actually the woman that I, she was a flight attendant and that I offered the cup of coffee. <laughs> so when she saw me, after she did a speech, she went back to the cockpit and I took a picture of her because I couldn't, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's her. <laughs> And you know how it's very rare to find a pilot, woman pilot, first of all, right? So I never imagined she could be the pilot and especially in my plane, I mean, <laughs> plane in the airport. So when she saw me sitting in the aisle, she asked the flight attendant to, to go pick, to go and, and, and call me. So I see the flight attendant coming to see me and said, excuse me, the captain would like to see you. And then I look at the couple on the side of me and I, so I took my, my, I go to see the captain and guess what happened? Picture number three. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sitting in the cockpit and she makes I was with her, right, the co-pilot, and she introduced me to him, uh, William, and Jane. And so we talk and we had a chat. So the door was open, everybody could see us, and I could not believe how friendly she was and so sweet. And she was like, "Oh, I'm so I was so touched by your gesture to give us a cup of coffee. I couldn't believe I was I could I was so shy. I didn't know what to do, what to say, you know." Yeah. <laughs> have a seat have a seat and so I was like here all the people were coming in the plane and I'm like oh my gosh this is <laughs> and then when I came back to my seat the couple were like do you know her? I actually <laughs> just met her and I just offered her a cup of coffee to her and the co-pilot so that's the story of the cup of coffee that's what a cup of coffee can take you I always wanted to get, I always wanted to get up there in the cop. I always wanted to sit in that seat because I just think it would be so amazing to get that view. It was, it was really amazing and it's actually very tiny. I can't yeah. those pilot that tall can do it. It's, it was overwhelming for me. I see all those light, all those things and, you know, and, and I was like very shy because I didn't know really what, I didn't expect I would be ending up in a seat. She's like, oh yes. And she was so humble you know oh yes go ahead have a seat and and so she said do you have any questions <laughs> i was like oh, what is that for you know <laughs> it was just crazy and i'm thinking wow what a cup of coffee can take you it's amazing so that's why when you said that last time it reminded me this this episode this story you know and you just you know you get to know people on a whole another level when the door opens and you walk through it and you say hey you know i I feel like I should do this and you just do it. You don't second guess yourself and you just get to do all kinds of stuff that you might not have gotten to do. So yes. that I have, um, I have a, can I, I have a quick coffee story, but then I, can I have my other story. Can I do Oh, absolutely. Quick Go one? ahead. Yep. So Please. the, it's so funny because my first office was in a place called Paoli, Pennsylvania, and it was behind a Starbucks coffee. So like every day I would go to the Starbucks coffee and get a chai tea latte at the time. You know, it was, uh, I don't know what year it was, but it was a long time ago. And um, so I go in there and I was like, you know, today is the day where I'm going to ask all the people that work there because you see them every day. They know your drink. 
you know, at Starbucks, you know, so they know your drink, they have it ready for you. So I said, today's the day, guys. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, whoever can guess what number I'm thinking gets a free massage with me. And they're like, what? <laughs> I was like, yes, you get a free <laughs> massage with me. And uh, everyone was like, oh, you know, so they all guess. And then the woman who won, her name was uh, Sarah. And so she won the massage and she did. She came over and I gave her a massage and it was the first massage of her entire life. Oh, wow. I, yeah, and I didn't see Sarah for years until wow. I was teaching a class at the massage school. Oh, you inspire her. She received your massage. She loved the massage so much that she decided to go to massage school. Oh my so God. So then I go to the school and I see her there and guess where she works now? No, -uh. she works with me. <laughs> Who is you? That's amazing. <gasps> she's been with me for she's been with me for just about six years. Mm -hmm. I just watched you know her get have her first child, and so wow. So and you never know what'll happen when you go is, and get a coffee. This is awesome! What a cool idea! If you guys get the number, you have a free massage. This is awesome. I was my mentors always taught me that you know, to keep it balanced. Like a lot of people now say, you don't give anything away for free. But in my upbringing, it was give back because you've been given so much. So for me, once in a while, I used to like to just surprise someone or else I would have like a business card and on the back, I would write free session and I'd do my initials and I'd put an expiration date on it. That's amazing. Like I said, most people are so shocked. Mm -hmm. They don't come. But the ones that do come, you usually form some kind of unique bond with because it's almost like they needed that, you know? Yes, it they happened for up. a reason. Mm. Yeah. See, and that's amazing how the universe, you know, works because this lady, she was the one who guessed the number and then she loved so much, she go to the massage school and she worked with you. I mean, is that crazy <laughs> work? You know, she could not be here this day, right? Or she could not even guess the number. Who knows? No. She had to guess the number. That was a that was a destiny. She had to become a therapist. I mean, it's like when you understand how life works and it's everything together, it's it's true. When you hear the mentor and the people said, you just have to relax and enjoy the ride. It is so true. You have to trust. If you trust, it will come to you. You don't even have to worry about it. Will come. It will. If it's meant to be. If it's your way, it will come. I mean, for me, even sometimes I, I, I want to just be honest and say, sometimes I don't trust, you know, and sometimes I get like, ah, you know, but it's really important in those times to keep talking to people, you know, and keep showing yeah. up for yourself and letting people know how you're doing until uh, you get to the other side of those things, you know, because I think sometimes, uh, you know, the, the darkness, we experience some darkness uh, because, you know, the light's shining behind us, you know, I'm casting a little shadow so we can see our shit. Did I say shit? You know, and then it, it moves and then we can move on, you know, but I, I think there's got to be a little darkness once in a while too. So. Yeah, that's how we can appreciate the, the brightness and the shyness and everything. Yeah. It's like everything is in balance, but you know, we really have, yeah, it's amazing. Those, I love stories. That's a very good idea what you did. Do you, amazing. do you want just the regular off the street story that I love to tell? Yeah. Yes, so this please. is kind of this is kind of cheesy, and I, 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 I I've been telling this story for years. So when I was uh, probably twenty years old, so we're talking like almost thirty years ago now. Oh God! Oh, you look so young. Come on, look at that. You look like you're twenty-five. Stop it. You don't even have a wrinkle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and so, so it was a really long time ago, and I was like all about traveling, like. I didn't really have a serious job yet. Uh, I was, I would, you know, it was a little bit before I started doing massage and I would just like go places. And I was always like really seeking. I don't know what I was seeking, but I was seeking, you know, I just wanted to learn and, and, and do cool stuff. And I decided, you know, I had gone to Maine for a few months. I had done all these little trips. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to the beach. I, you know, this wasn't an extravagant trip, but I decided to go to Sea Isle, New Jersey. And I had a friend that said I could use their house. You know what it was? It was 1996. Um, so a, a friend said that I could use their house and um, 
I thought that was a cool idea. So I was like, yeah, I'll take, I'll go to the beach for a week and hang out. And I, and I was just going to like do some fasting, you know, and, and like reading and walks on the beach. And the, before I left for the beach, I went to my friend's house and she had just gotten back from North Carolina. And she had all over this table, all over this table, she had uh, conch shells, shells that look like this. You know these shells? They are very cool. Mm -hmm. She had like a table full of them. And in my wow. head, I'm like, I have never found a conch shell. Like never. I have never found one. And I don't understand why I've never found one. But you have a whole table full of them. And you know, I was a little envious. I was a little jealous. I wanted a conch shell. <laughs> So I'm like, maybe this will be my lucky shore trip. Maybe this is like my big gig. You know, maybe this is the time for me to find mine. So I, I go to the beach every morning for a walk. And I'm like, where's my conch shell? <laughs> That's all I could think about. Like, forget, you know, some spirituality. But like, I was on a mission then. I'm like, yeah. I, don't know, I want it. So I, I, I get to the beach, you know, and I'm doing my walk. And I'm walking and oh my God, lo, I like, for the first time in my life, there it was sitting that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shell. And I was like, yes, yes. And it was like winter time, you know, it wasn't summer. So I like picked up my shell and I was like, I found my shell, I found my shell. And I'm like, I, I found it. I finally got it. I asked, I wanted it. And here it is. And I'm like dancing on the beach. And like in the corner of my eye, I see this woman and she's walking towards me. And I'm like, I mean, I guess I could stop my dance now, you know, and I was so excited about my shell. And as she got closer inside myself, inside my deepest part of my heart, I heard, give her the shell. <gasps> I was like, I just got this shell after like 20 some years. I just got this shell and now I'm supposed to give the shell away. That is the craziest idea I have ever, ever heard. There is no way I am giving this woman the shell and she's getting closer. I'm not giving her the shell. And then she passes me. I'm not giving her the shell. And then she walks by me and I go, excuse me, ma'am. And she turns around and she looks all like grumpy and stuff. I said, I know this might sound really weird, but I just really felt like the universe wanted you to have the shell that maybe the shell will brighten your day. You know, I wanted the shell, but I'm going to give you Aww. the shell. And she got like a little, you know, like for some reason, it just made her like get a little, get a little tear in her eyes. And so I was like, wow. And I watched her walk away with my first shell. And I was like, yeah, I am so spiritual and deep. Look at me. Look at me. This is then I get a few more steps and I'm like, wait a minute, I gave away my shell. Why the hell would I give away my shell? I waited my whole life for that shell. Why did I give away the shell? And then I got home and I'm like, why did I give away the shell? I shouldn't have given away the shell. Maybe I shouldn't have given away the shell, the shell, the shell. I go to sleep, the covers are up. I'm like, why did I give away the shell? I wonder if there'll be another shell. I probably will never get another shell. And then that night, a hurricane happened. It was 1996. It was not a hurricane. It was a blizzard. The blizzard of 1996. So it's snowing and snowing and snowing to the point where my car is like covered with snow. I go out for my morning walk and I look at the bay and it's like the ocean. And I look at the ocean and it's like something I never saw before. But I'm like, I'm still going on my walk. So I get suited up and I'm still pissed about the shell and I take one step on the beach and there's a shell and there's another shell yeah. and there's another shell. There was so many shells that I had to run back to the house to get a bag to get all the conch shells on the beach. There was oh so God. many conch shells that I had to grab shopping cart bags and I was putting them in there. I'm like, oh, so many conch shells now. <laughs> oh my God, I had like goosebumps. I'm putting the conch shells in. And I came home with so many shells. I still have the shells in my office. I gave away a ton of shells. And like wow. in that moment, when I saw the shells, you know, I heard my, you know, a silent like reflection that when I, Diane, when you do, you know, the next right thing, you'll have all that you need and more. Never it's, worry. It's, oh my gosh, this is, oh, I have goosebumps. You give me goosebumps. <laughs> So this is one of the shells. I have like way bigger one, a couple bigger ones at the office, but I was like, 
damn this is a beautiful story it's so true you know like you had this intuition and first of all you made a day she completely changed you made her happy she was vulnerable before she had something happening in her life and then you give her what was the most important to you so important to me at that time it was and and this is what sometimes it's it we have to let go what is so important to us you know and then that's what you did to this woman so you changed completely your energy your life you made her happy the happiest woman in the world and then you know, look at this girl she gave away what was the most important thing in her life so we're gonna make sure she's gonna get more and it's multiply you know what i mean so it's just amazing how the universe will what will do it it's 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 amazing what your action will have automatically something that will happen after what you do you know so it's amazing it's a and i think cool story. i think too like the scarier thing sometimes they'll let go of whether it be like a way we protect ourselves from other people by yes. a lot of those or like something that you know is a material gift that we're really uh, attached to you know uh, the harder things are the ones that really help me grow the most you know i think that's amazing yeah oh, so for that story so uh I think that's a story. Do, All my friends. We sh we should do another story time. What do you think? Oh, I think it's so awesome. I because know. then I'll keep looking for stories, and then maybe people online will have some stories for us. Yes, you know what it is. It's actually a very good idea to write a book of stories to inspire people. You know, and then you put all your stories in the book, and then people can read and say, "Wow!" Because this is very inspiring. You bring your joy, you hope. You know, and it's. Yeah, I love this idea. And I think too, like I said, this isn't maybe like a massage technique or even a business strategy, but yet it kind of is. You know, it's just always yeah. being honest, open and willing is one of my favorites, you know, and showing up for yourself. Like you did walk through the door and you'll be sitting in the front of an airplane in the captain's chair. You know? <laughs> like you never know what's going to happen. You know, I know it's you're right. It's just amazing. You and it's that's what we do in our day with doing massage. So we have to show up. We have to be there. So I think you're absolutely right. Everything is related. Everything in life that we do, it's all related, no matter what. You know. So um, I think I love this idea of uh, telling story. It's amazing. So I, I guess what we'll do uh, is we'll uh, set up another time and uh, absolutely we'll we'll get on that. And for now. Yeah. Uh, you and I will, let me see, I, I don't usually do Zoom on Facebook Live. Okay, I know how to do it now. But everybody, thank you so much for joining us for our story time. Please don't yes. hesitate to get in touch uh, and, you know, share. If you have a story similar that you want to share, we'd love to hear it. And uh, I have a, a lot of stories because, like I said, storytelling used to be more of like an art and a craft, I think. Uh, we used to sit around um, when I was uh, younger and just tell stories of our experiences and then sh share older stories that were passed down. Um, so I'm excited to do this with you. Absolutely. Me too. You know, I have a lot of stories that happen in the airport and on a plane because I travel so much. No, so we would be again on the airport and on the plane, but that's where I meet a lot of people, actually, because... You know, when you travel by yourself, you really, you, I'm very open to meet people. And so I have a lot of stories that happen on the plane and on the airport. So next time, absolutely, I will be happy to share another one. Well, everyone, we're going to log off. Uh, if you would hang tight, uh, I'd love to speak with you more, though. And we'll see you next time for story time.